Hey, thanks a lot for joining me in this lesson. We're gonna take a quick look at the opening lick to Bus Stop by The Hollies. This lesson is by request, and I'm gonna take you through just the basic melody of the introduction lick, and then we'll build on it with two versions that lay the foundation with the chords underneath it, eventually uh, helping you to play the full lick. Now, the first thing to do is determine what chords we're playing over in this introduction. The first chord is one bar of A minor, followed by one bar of G major. So the notes that this lick is based on actually come out of the C major scale, which fits perfectly over an A minor chord. So what you wanna do is come up here to fifth position. Your first finger will be focused around the fifth fret and each finger basically just laying on the frets that follow. So our fourth finger at the eighth fret on the high E string. And basically we're just gonna descend right down the C major scale and come back up. The opening part of the lick, just the melody section looks like this. So you notice we're starting there, eighth fret, eight, seven, five, and then eight on the B string, and then back to five on the E string. The second part of the lick that fits over that G major chord is very simple, it's just two notes. Uh, we slide up to the 10th fret on the B string, play that with our third finger, and then first finger, eighth fret on the B string. So very simple there. You put both of those halves of the lick together and this is what you end up with. Now, one of the things you hear on the recording is what sounds like a little bit of a pull-off in that melody section. In other words, instead of just holding these two notes, it almost sounds like the first note there is uh, being pulled off from another note, similar to this. Now, as we look at the other versions of this lick, it'll become clear how that little sound comes about. Now, when you listen to the original recording, there's more to this opening lick than just these individual notes. Of course, it's, I think, played on a 12-string acoustic guitar, but uh, you can play it easily on a six-string acoustic or even an electric guitar. But uh, what's important about this is we're not just playing single notes, as we demonstrated before. We're actually gonna fill out this lick by adding some of the notes from the chord underneath the melody. Let me show you how we do that. We're gonna be making use of the top three strings on the guitar, the E, B, and G strings. And your melody is gonna stay the same on the top. But you notice that I have my first finger barred at the fifth fret over the G, B, and E strings. And that is the top of an A minor chord. So now what I can do is if I hold my first finger there, I can strum all three of those strings with the same timing and play the melody with my fourth and third fingers, just the same way as we did before. Now for the second part of the lick, we're just gonna slide up two frets with our first finger. And here are the other fingerings that you wanna use. You wanna put your second finger on the eighth fret of the B string in preparation for what we're gonna to come to, and then your fourth finger, 10th fret of the B string. And the way to do this is we're actually gonna play uh, these two with an upstroke on our pick. So same rhythm as before, all we're doing is adding a few notes around those melody notes. And what's interesting is this little 
chord shape that you end up with is the same as your G chord. So it fits perfectly over the chords in the intro. Here's what it looks like when you put those two pieces together. And you remember how we said before it sounded like there's a little bit of a pull-off note in the melody, similar to this? Well, that's the importance of doing that upstroke with the second part of the phrase. These two notes are the same as And if you watch any of the, the rare videos of the Hollies uh, playing this live, you'll usually see the guitar player maintain this chord shape. So that shows me that there wasn't, at least when they were playing it live, there's no physical pull-off in playing the melody, but it's just, it's just done with that upstroke of the pick. You could even play the, the entire lick with upstrokes. That's also possible. Pretty good to practice it that way as well. Now the last version of the lick kind of completes it a little bit more and it also increases the difficulty. So this is a nice way to practice it. We'll call this phase three of the lick. And there's not much that has changed with it. We're only gonna add one extra note to this little foundation chord that we're putting underneath this phrase. So let me show you the fingering here, and then we'll talk about what needs to change with regard to playing the melody. So the fingering for your A minor shape is, it's going to still be these uh, top three strings, G, B, and E, at the fifth fret, barred with your first finger, but you're gonna add seventh fret on the D string with your third finger. And that's still the top of an A minor chord. So if you know your bar chords, there's a barred A minor, and here's the top of that A minor chord. Now what has to change with how you play the melody now is you're not gonna be able to use your third finger for the melody line, so you actually have to slide back and forth using just your fourth finger. So notice how you would do that. I won't play the entire chord, but notice what my uh, fourth finger does here. So you could practice just that little line right there very slowly. And you notice how we're keeping these other fingers anchored. So if you were to strum the top four strings of the guitar, and you notice how that lick gets filled out a little bit more with that lower a note in the A minor chord. Now we just have to fill out the uh, final chord shape for the phrase that fits over the G major, and we'll do that again by just sliding up two frets. And you have basically the same anchor shape as the A minor, except we're just gonna drop, again, our second finger, eighth fret on the B string. And that's what that chord shape now looks like. Same as before, we've just dropped the third finger here, ninth fret on the D string. And if we're to play that lick again using the upstroke, we start with our fourth finger, 10th fret on the B string, and then we just come off to the eighth fret while we leave the rest of the chord in place. So that's a basic look at three different versions of the lick increasing in difficulty as you practice them. Some things that you can do as you practice the lick, we mentioned it before, but uh, you can play all upstrokes to practice it. You can alternate strokes. It's uh, an excellent exercise for your picking hand as well. So all upstrokes with the full chord shape would look something like this.
And the more you practice that, the easier it will get with both your picking hand and also as you get the technique down of anchoring the chord shape while playing the melody with basically your fourth and second fingers. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lesson format. If you have any suggestions for riffs or licks that you'd like to see covered, leave them in the comments section down below. As an extra thank you for sticking around to the end of this lesson, here's a coupon code for my Backing Tracks album. It's available on uh, my website, vip.jpguitar.com. The code's active for 48 hours after this video goes live. Be sure to hit that like button if you haven't done so already, and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you in the next one.